Hi. Imagine there is a grandfather. He started his life from scratch. Let us call him first generation. He acquired five acres in his lifetime. That is called self-acquired property. Now, during his lifetime, he had a son and a daughter. Daughter got married and she has another daughter. Son acquired another five acres, second generation. And now the total property along with the grandfather and his son is total 10 acres. So there are two males and two females in the joint family, two females left. Because here the context has to be taken as 1956 and 2005. So our illustration is after 1956. Okay. So first generation one male, second generation another male. Total property, joint property is 10 acres. And two females left, daughter and his her daughter. Daughter got married and her daughter, she had a daughter. So till now there are two males and two females. Now second generation completed. Now third generation comes. Again a son and daughter. And there is a daughter to the daughter. Daughter got married, she left. The third generation also acquired five acres and it got added up to the joint property. Now fourth generation came. They have also one son and a daughter. Daughter got married. She was also having one daughter. Fourth generation also, five acres was earned or acquired and gave into the joint property. So now totally there are four males. Forget about the wives of the four males. Totally there are about four males and six females. Three daughters and daughters to their daughters. Prior to 2005, the share of the four males who are called co-parsoners. Now it is a new word, ancient word. So let us understand it as in a simple language. It is co-partners of ancient ancestral property. Now because four family members, four males worked on that property. Their shares were included in the ancestral property. Their hard work was included in the ancestral property. It became ancestral property. And they lived together with one kitchen, one income, one uh, puja room, one house. So therefore, they were living together under one roof. Okay, jointly working, working together. It is called ancient ancestral Hindu joint family. And now these all four members are called co-parsoners. Prior to 2005, everybody will get five acres each if they divide the property. Now, joint property can be divided also. After 2005, the total family members became 10. When daughters and their daughters, that is married daughters and their daughters, married or unmarried. Let us presume for the sake of better understanding as unmarried daughters. So, married daughters and their unmarried daughters, totally 6 members. So, 4 plus 6, 10. Now, after 2005, the share of the four males decreases from five acres to two acres. So, everybody will get a share of two acres. So, why four generations was taken into consideration? Because in the ancient time, it is difficult for anybody to live more than four generations. Today, it is possible even fifth generation is coming also alive. But earlier, four generations was maximum because of the poor medical facilities. So, law predicted, Mitakshara law, it is called the Mitakshara law. It predicted that only four generations will be, will be able to survive at any point of time. That's grandfather, father, son and grandson. Now, if great grandson also is born, he will not get right till grandfather dies in the ancestral property. So at any point of time, four generations are taken into consideration for computation of the shares. The shares will decrease if anybody takes birth and the shares will increase if anybody dies. So that's the concept of the joint Hindu ancestral property. So, there could be one or two disadvantages here, one or two exceptions. In the recent Supreme Court judgment also, the exceptions are the property if partitioned or sold or gifted to third parties prior to 2005, then the females or the daughters will not have right to question that, provided it is fraud. One. 
the other option here we can expect is any male member dies if male member dies his share in the joint property prior to 2005 or after 2005 that is based on 1956 law or 2005 law his family will come out of the joint property and they will divide in accordance with the regular inheritance that is regular inheritance means if the husband dies wife daughters and mother gets if the wife dies husband and the children get sons and daughters that's a regular inheritance rule so if anybody dies they will come out of the family property and they will share in accordance with the in regular inheritance rule so what is regular inheritance rule i will come in come up in another video not in this video and one more point is the assets and the liabilities what about the loans that were taken by the joint family property or family prior to 2005 daughters are not liable for that loans daughters will be liable along with the sons only after 2005 so three exceptions what happens if the partition is uh, property is partition that i have told what happens about the liabilities and the assets prior to 2005 amendment that also i have explained and what happens when somebody dies prior to 2005 their family will come out of the joint family property or the partition after getting partition their share so that's how the simple way to understand the 122 page supreme court judgment though i have given some of the important operating paragraphs in the description box below and they go three don't get confused it's a very confusing law vitakshara law uh, is a very confusing law understand in a simple language what i have explained to you right now if you have any doubts kindly comment i will try to make another video or answer to them thank you thanks for watching